Okay, my name is um, Owen Griffiths. I'm a serving police officer. Um, I'm from Port Talbot in South Wales. Um, and my story is about, um, well, really an incident that happened to me back in 2004. Um, and following that incident, um, and the way that I, um, I dealt with that and the way that I felt during that and um, how my eyes were opened up to, um, towards mental health, to anxiety and, um, and how people deal with it really. I was on duty in, in May 2004 when I, um, I attended an incident that um, didn't entirely go to plan, so to speak. Um, following that, um, I, was quite, I was injured um, and so were other people. There followed an investigation, um, which, which happens with every sort of police incident really, um, that involved myself, some colleagues and, um, and uh, some members of the public as well. But my abiding memory of that really was as the incident happened, um, I can remember being hit um, with what felt like a physical force. And that physical force was um, a change in my mental health that happened like that really. I'd always been quite a laid back person. I'd always um, taken things in, in my stride. Um, although I could worry a little bit when I was younger about um, you know, exams and uh, relationships and the normal things that people worry about. Um, I can remember being hit by, um, I can only describe it as a physical force, which was, um, which was anxiety. Um, and I remember thinking at that moment, um, as I stood there in the, in the dark of the night, um, having just been involved in something uh, quite uh, horrendous, that um, everything had changed. From that point on, um, I developed feelings and uh, thoughts that were um, things I'd never experienced before, things that I couldn't believe um, could happen. And my abiding sort of um, memory again of it was my inability to, to switch myself off, which is all I wanted to do because of the, um, the thoughts that were racing through my head constantly. And then my experiences of going through the, um, uh, the, uh, the doctor route, trying to find help um, into looking at different alternative therapies and uh, the realisation, which was a, a tough realisation, that there wasn't a magic wand that could just make me feel better, which is all I wanted to do was feel better and feel like myself. I was almost wanting to be sectioned, um, wanting to be taken somewhere where I thought they could do that for me. Um, and when I went to the GP, I can remember going there with, it, with, it, with, a, with a feeling of hope, really, that things were going to change from that moment. And um, although the GP was excellent, she, she was excellent at the time, I can remember um, I was in tears in the, in the GP surgery. Um, again, I had a 10 minute window where I had to try and explain my situation about how I felt, what I was going through um, with the GP, um, which wasn't enough. Um, I left having given some, um, some tablets and um, with a, uh, uh, a, a promise that I would be referred to um, the, the mental health services. Um, that took an awful long time, an awful long time. And I can remember thinking at that moment, even though the, the thoughts that were going through my head were all consuming, I could still remember thinking, I need help now, I need help today. And, and that unfortunately um, wasn't there. I found the medication quite difficult. Um, I was given sleeping tablets, I remember. I was given um, some Citaloplan, I believe it was, and, and something else. And um, a few days after taking the medication, I hit rock bottom. Um, and I don't think that was explained to me, that the medication could have an adverse effect before it got a beneficial effect. Because there was, a, there was one occasion where um, I was just curled in a ball and crying on the floor. I, I can clearly remember that, with being with my mother. and. Um, that was difficult because it was really, really difficult to be to be like that, and I was hoping that um, you know I didn't think the medication would do that. I thought the medication would make me better, um, but um, I didn't really get a lot of benefit from it. I felt that it made me um, uh, it more nullified my feelings. I think in that um, I, I I couldn't be happy or sad or um, I put on weight. I became forgetful, which was another thing that happened. Um, so as soon as I was weighed on the line when I, when I came off the medication, but I can remember thinking, um, I'm glad of that. I don't really want to, to go down that route anymore. Um, but that was the only thing that was offered to me at the time, really. So that's where I had to go with. I was off work for a little while um, and I wasn't myself. I was in a very difficult place because I'd recently moved um, jobs, uh, stations really, in, in, in the police. So I didn't know any of my new colleagues. Um, a lot of people, the difficulty I got was trying to convey my feelings to people who knew me and who didn't know me really. 
And I, I think I was coming across as um, some sort of uh, rabid individual who was just constantly talking about his own problems. And I must have been very, very difficult to be around. Um, I was constantly, what if, what if this, what if that, what if this? Um, and my parents were, were trying their best, uh, along with my, my wife. Um, we had a very young family at the time as well. Um, were trying to, to help me. But they were going down the route of, oh, pull yourself together now. Come on, sort yourself out which is everything I wanted to do, but what I really couldn't do. Um, after seeing the GP, there was, there was quite a wait. And I can remember, I, I don't remember the details, but going to, to speak to somebody who, um, again, referred me to the hospital in Bajend. Um, again, I thought, great, they're going to take me to hospital. They're going to make me well. Um, and I can remember going to hospital and um, almost thinking I should pack my bags to go. Um, but all it was was an interview. Um, a chat and then I was uh, I was let go um, and uh, we'll follow it up but with a, a phone number to, to ring if um, if I really need to speak to somebody and I can remember getting to the point where I needed to speak to somebody and ringing that number and um, listening to an answer phone message um, basically pleading with the person to ring me back and that call never came I can remember that um, but I can also remember then trying to to work out how I was going to, to help myself. There were some real dark moments. I can, I can remember um, one time walking along with my, with my dad and um, we walked across a viaduct. And I, I can remember thinking, um, if, I, if I just jumped over here now, um, all this would go away, you know? And um, thoughts like that, which I quickly um, got over. But I was having also like crazy moments where I was thinking, right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move now to America and I'm gonna start again and I'm going to do this and it will all be different. And uh, tomorrow, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the family and I'm gonna take the family for the day to Longley Safari Park. Because when I go to Longley Safari Park, all this will be left behind and I will be fine and I'll have a great day and I'll feel brilliant. And, um, and then the next day, actually driving down there and being a total mess because I couldn't escape. Um, constantly holding my phone in my hand um, thinking it's going to ring now, it's going to ring. There's going to be news. There's going to be um, this because uh, my anxiety was all based around this incident and what was happening around it. And I can remember receiving a call about two weeks after the incident that um, was some good news. And um, I was in a, a local park with my uh, my son who was only two at the time. And the call came, and I, I can remember speaking on the phone. And this good news came through and. For just a couple of moments, well, a couple of hours probably, I felt like myself again. And it was a crazy feeling really to, to go from this new me back to the old me, just briefly. And I thought, I'm well, I'm well. And it was almost like um, a cloud had lifted or a weight had been taken off my shoulders. And then um, it slowly crept back on, you know, as, uh, as I analysed what I'd heard and I wanted to hear more about it and et cetera, et cetera. And, but I was just bumbling around in the dark really. Um, I did um, receive some counselling. Uh, work were excellent, in fairness. Um, the uh, support the uh, the police give, uh, because um, yeah, in the police, you know, a lot of people are involved in things which are very traumatic. And uh, I received some counselling, which um, which helped me initially. Um, but again, all I wanted, um, I wanted that magic wand, and that magic wand wasn't there, which was difficult. A lot of the help I had was from work. Um, I also a um, uh, I got to know um, another officer who'd, who'd been involved in something um, traumatic himself. And he came to um, ringing me um, and speaking to me quite often. And I would await, I'd wait for his calls, you know, I'd wait for his calls. And it was a problem, it was a curse and, and a boon really, because um, I'd always, again, have my phone there. And, but as soon as he did call, I'd, I'd feel better. Uh, there was a friend of mine who was terrific at the time. Um, he had two dogs and uh, we would uh, go out and walk the dogs. And again, although um, to him, I must, uh, I must have come across as, um, as being um, really difficult to be with because I always just wanted to talk about my own problems. It's very, very selfish illness, um, although it feels like. Um, it makes you into something that you're not really in that. It's, it's very self-indulgent. Um, but all I wanted to do was talk about that. He was great, my wife was great, my, my uh, family were fantastic. Um, I received, um, a couple of years later really, um, I went to um, 
some mental health um, inputs in a, in a hospital nearby, which were, um, I'd been referred to. And I think it was two years to the day that I had a letter for the post. And I actually went along and I went to some relaxation classes and things like that. But at the time, I was feeling better. Um, so they weren't such a benefit to me. I was more thinking, oh, you know, I used to feel like this. I don't anymore. The best thing uh, I came across was um, the police have a rehabilitation centre in um, Goring on Thames in um, a, a place called Flint House. And they were fantastic. Um, I received, I went there for two weeks intensive sort of uh, therapy really. And, and that helped me a lot. Uh, although some of the things I did from then uh, have been frowned, uh, frowned upon uh, by um, uh, some uh, professionals I've spoken to. One of the things that benefited me the most was I put an elastic band around my wrist. And um, every time I, um, I could feel my, my thoughts growing or, or I was becoming more anxious about something, I would give it a ping and it would just bring me back. And um, I found that of great benefit. Because of this incident, and hopefully I'll, I'll go on to explain, is um, my interest in how I felt and how I was going to recover um, became really important to me. And uh, from there, I've, um, I've gone on to learn a bit about you know, mindfulness, about um, relaxation techniques, because I had to be self-helped. I had to be um, self-taught because no one was going to do it for me. Um, and initially, in the early stages, what I really wanted was someone to do it for me. But I, I came to the realisation, probably a few months down the line, that I was going to have to do it myself. And that's when I, um, things started to change for me, really. Where I'm at now is... Um, I gained a great interest in, um, in, in mental health. I gained a, a, an awareness, I feel, about people's feelings that I never had before. Um, I come to the realisation that uh, I can't undo what was done and I can't undo the way that it made me feel. But I can, um, I've gained so much from it and I've learned to look at it as something, I didn't want it to happen, but it happened. And I can't change the fact that it happened. I can remember watching, and this is quite silly, but I can remember watching, um, while I was in the, in the depth of it really, um, one of the Lord of the Rings films was on there. And um, Gandalf, in his wisdom, he turns to Frodo and he says, um, then I something along the lines of, um, uh, Frodo says, I, I, I don't want the ring. I don't want the ring. I, I wish the ring had never come to me. And Gandalf turns to him and he says, all of us who live to see such times wish things like that. But it's what we learn to do with it is what counts. And uh, it inspires Frodo through like a dark time. And um, although, um, yeah, it may seem strange, that to me uh, made a big difference in that um, I felt I never want anyone else to feel how I felt. And I've got no doubt that one day that may happen again. And um, although it's, um, I don't think um, anxiety, depression ever truly goes away. Um, but you learn to live with it and you learn to know about it. And that's what helped me hugely, is the fact that I, although um, today I feel great, um, I, I, I'm doing a job I enjoy, I, um, I'm helping people. Um, I'm learning a lot about mental health myself. I, I do, as part of my role now, I do stress management courses for other officers. Uh, I deal with student officers who are just coming into the force and I try and um, help them as much as I can when I see that one or two of them are starting to struggle. Um, I give talks about my own experiences um, in hopefully to, to help others. And I know that when it happens to you, it's like a cloud in the sky and that cloud may stay for a day or two days or five days and it may rain heavily upon you, but it does pass and behind the cloud is the sun and it will shine. And um, that is what I've learned, is that you can't let it define you and you can't let it become you because um, if you want to get better, you will. And um, it's all about pushing yourself through the darkest times. I think a lot of it was to do with how the things I, what I learned about was um, how cyclical it could be. Um, going back to what I said about carrying the mobile phone, I think I carried that with me because I knew that if I was going to get any news, it was going to happen between nine and five on that day. And the cycle of my anxiety um, worked like that. It could, uh, at the start of the day, I'd get up really early and I'd be dreading that nine o'clock because I knew people started to work at nine o'clock and things were going to happen. And of course, they were all talking about me and the world was revolving about me and my problems. 
So um, between nine and five, I'd hold that phone close to me because I knew that, you know, it, it was going to ring. And then when five o'clock came, it was like a weight was off my shoulders because I, in my own, own head, I thought, oh, right, five o'clock, now nothing's going to happen. And then throughout the evening, I get better, better and better until just before I went to bed, I was thinking, yeah, I'm well, and tomorrow I'm going to go to Long, Longley to Fairy Park or I'm going to go swimming or I'm going to join a gym or I'm going to be a film star or I'm going to do whatever I want. And then, um, boom, the next morning you're back to square one. What I learned through that really was how you should, in those darkest times is when you really need to push yourself forward. I think at that nine o'clock, in the what was my nine o'clock in the morning, but could be somebody else's 2 a.m., is the time that, you need to go jogging, or you need to um, watch a happy film, or you need to do some mindfulness, or you need to do some relaxation, or you need to think about something other than what is constantly bothering you. I can remember going through times where I would try and put my thoughts on other things for two minutes, or five minutes, or ten minutes, um, and pushing myself through it like that. Uh, I got really into um, the black dog books, and there's a number of books. Um, uh, I had a black dog, etc., which are fantastic books. But I tried to envision the um, the anxiety like a dog, like a black dog. And I can remember being a la uh, uh, awake late at night and thinking, right, he's there now. I am taking him to the kennel. And I would, in my imagination, I would take the dog to the kennel in the back garden that was down a long lane. And by the time we got there, I'd put him in the kennel and tied him up and closed the door. Cruel that I was being to the dog. And then I'd go back to bed. And by, although it seems strange, trying to do that in my mind, it, it made me feel better, even if it was just for that little short time before he managed to get out and come and sit on my shoulder again. Going back to my story, and um, I've condensed really two occasions into one um, when I've spoken. Um, they were split by years apart. There were, there were lots of different things. But I've been, um, and I won't say anxiety free because of course I worry and of course I have bad days, but I've been um, uh, free of the all consuming anxiety for seven years. Um, and that to me is a great thing. Learning to um, empower yourself through meditation, through mindfulness, through um, whatever it is that makes you happy. Another thing that I, I look back to is when you look at the old stories, um, Walt Disney did a great deal of stories with Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Bear, Br'er Fox. And Br'er Rabbit uh, has got a great thing, he's called it um, the happy place. And his happy place is his briar patch. And uh, when he goes to the briar patch, which is uh, just a load of nettles all clawing around, he's got a little den and he sits there and he sings his songs and he fishes in a pond and nothing can touch him because his life is consumed by Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear trying to catch him. But when he goes to the briar patch, they can't get near him. You need a happy place. Everyone needs a happy place. Finding a happy place is kind of sometimes difficult. Um, for me, it was making a little office in, in, my, um, uh, in, in my house, getting involved in theatre again, learning to love my job and trusting my colleagues. Um, but if I feel if things are starting to get on top of me, I go to my happy place. For some people, the happy place could be going for a jog. It could be walking your dog. It could be going for a swim. It could be going for a meal with friends or family. But have that place where you won't be touched. Turn your phone off and put it away and um, just leave it away. And don't worry because if it's important, someone will ring you back. But learning to do that and just detach in and go into the happy place is a massive help to anybody and I, I would encourage anybody to do that. Um, I'm showing my age now, uh, Br'er Rabbit hasn't been on telly for a long time but I'm sure you can find him on YouTube. But um, please do that, um, it's a great benefit to yourself. Find somewhere where you feel safe and you feel happy and stay there and your happy place gets bigger and bigger and bigger without you ever really knowing it. Please, please don't give in to it uh, and know that it will pass and it will pass, but you've got to want it to pass as well. If you give in and you curl into a ball and just let it consume you, it will. But see it as a challenge, and it may take you days, it may take you weeks, it may take you years, but you will get there. And to come out of that bad place is, um, is, is a beautiful thing, and to actually see and know that it's not forever, and you can be you again, and you will be you again, um, but 
be positive about it. Be positive. Even in the darkest times, be positive. And um, you will get better. Promise you that.